History will be kind to me, for I intend to write it. That quote is attributed to Winston Churchill. Did Churchill really say that? Mm, I don't know. I wasn't there. But it sounds cool. When discussing Western history, we are particularly interested in the medieval period. Sometimes, unfortunately, referred to as the Dark Ages. That's about a thousand years of history, roughly from the fall of Roman Britain in AD 410, the emperor infamously telling them to look to your own defenses, to the fall of Constantinople in the 1400s at the hands of the Ottoman Empire. This block of time, in a lot of ways, sets the foundational table for the societies we live in today. During that period, a laundry list of men and women made their mark on history, but there's a short list of those whose actions and lives all but revolutionized the era in such a way that any thorough discussion of their time without them and their contributions is void of a certain weight and merit. Near the top of that list is one Charlemagne, Carl de Grossa, Carolus Magnus, Charles the Great. You talk in Western European history, my man's is unavoidable. Really the entire Carolingian empire, but especially Charlemagne. Born in either 747 or 748, he became king of the Franks in 768 as a young man because he didn't come out of nowhere. Like it still does today, even more so back then, it helped tremendously if you come from good stock. Someone to lay the groundwork for you. Alexander the Great had Philip II, right? Octavian had Julius Caesar. Richard the Lionheart had Henry II. Well, without Charles the Hammer Martel, Pepin the Short, there would be no Charlemagne. However, it's what he did with his head start that makes his life so noteworthy. He looms large in the histories of France, Germany, Belgium, Spain, Italy. A military and logistical genius, he campaigned for decades, consolidating vast amounts of territory across Western Europe, bringing opposition to heel through political machinations or sword and spear, mostly the latter. Year after year after year, the warlike Franks marched out and brought the drama to your door. Get down or lay down. And when we say get down, we mean get down to pray. The Franks were Christians. He kept the heathens under pressure. There were still many Germanic pagans on the continent at this day, and Charlemagne wasn't having it. In one particularly grisly episode in 782, Charles apparently ordered the deaths of over 4,000 pagans in a day. Thou shall not revolt. He continued his father's close relationship with the bishops of Rome, coming to the Pope's aid in their tug of war with the Lombards. Charles did what Charles does best. He marched down on Northern Italy, removed the Lombards from power, and assumed the throne. Problem solved. He was such a tireless defender of the papacy, he was given an honor unseen for nearly 300 years. In 800, Charlemagne was crowned the Holy Roman Emperor, the first in the West since Romulus Augustus was opposed in 476. He wasn't merely a great warrior, though. He was a patron of learning and culture, his court at Aachen became a center of intellectual activity where scholars and thinkers gathered to revive classical education. His alliance with the church, the legal and administrative reforms, stabilized the empire, helping to bring about what many refer to as the Carolingian Renaissance. Carolus Magnus died in 814, and by 843, the Treaty of Verdun divided the empire among his grandsons, marking the beginning of its eventual fragmentation into distinct territories. Charlemagne's reign serves as a crucial chapter in the complex narrative of European history, shaping the medieval period and influencing the development of the continent for centuries to come. If you like history, we'll continue to post frequently. See you at the top of the mountain, like and subscribe for more.